Greetings and salutations. My name is Munchie and we are going to be reviewing the preview single story hamster and gerbil cage. And we're going to be reviewing it in the color pink because that's the only thing I currently have right here. So before we jump into it, you might be asking, why is this cage being reviewed as the title Bad Cage Review before you even review it? Don't worry guys, I already know it's a bad cage and I wish to inform you guys, the viewers, of why this cage is bad. First, let's start with the way it looks here. You might be thinking, it's quite small, but usually small cages are made for small animals, right? Unfortunately, no. A lot of the small animals like hamsters and gerbils, they have bigger needs and requirements. The pan here, along with removable a tray for some reason, is plastic. It's a very flimsy plastic. And gerbils cannot have plastic enclosures because they can escape out of them. Tanks are required for gerbils. Whereas hamsters, they can be in plastic enclosures or plastic pans like this. They won't shoot through. However, if you have a very stressed or bored hamster, you might be seeing some damage done to these sides here if you have a hamster house in something as small as this. Hamsters are foraging animals and they need the stimulation inside of a larger enclosure to get what they desperately need as found in the wild. That's why wheels are always required in enclosures 24 7. This enclosure does include a wheel. We will be reviewing the size because size does matter for your specific animal. So if anybody were to have gotten this cage and not know any better, sizing does matter especially for the bigger animals. If they can't run in the wheel because it's too small then they can't use it and they can get bored very quickly and stressed. Hamsters require 450 square inches in the United States. I've already gone and measured this. This is 14 by 11. So 14 in length by 11 in width. And that equals 154 square inches, way below the standards of any suitable small pet. Now you might be thinking, well, what about mice? Mice should be, if you have pet mice, if female mice, they should be in pairs or more. Male mice, even though they are meant to just be by themselves, they do benefit from a bigger space. Not too big, however, because they can become timid, but just the right amount of space for them will make them very happy and very pleased. If you come into this cage with the ideal of, well, it's a small cage, I can provide it time and stimulation outside the cage, the end Animal would probably need to be outside of the enclosure well over three hours worth of playtime. So having the thought of, well, if I get something small, I can substitute it by providing it with exercise balls or play pins for 30 minutes of playtime and then put it back in something like this, it will become stress. Hamsters are stress prone, so that's why you always got to be careful and make sure guys to do your research first before purchasing a small pet. If you happen to get the hamster, gerbil, or mouse, first and then get the cage second. That means you haven't really looked into it and you should probably consider looking further into how to care for your animal and what their needs are. So now that we've learned that this thing is well under the 450 square inches in the United States of appropriate floor space and for the UK viewers out there, 620 is the minimum in your area. This enclosure only has one entryway and the entryway is as big as one hand. You can't fit multiple hands in here. So that is a very big problem because if you're sticking a small animal in here, they are prey animals and they have prey instincts. So anything that comes from above, they are very fearful of. So I much rather like cages to come in from the side so you can have easy access to them. Coming in from the top and going like this, trying to get your animal, that is gonna be super scary. You might also get bit as well. So. That's really dinky right there. And the only way to get your wheel out too if you're trying to clean off your wheel is by completely removing it. But let's talk about the pan because this is very interesting. For small animals, they need a lot of bedding. Gerbils especially, they need mountains of bedding because they spend the majority of their time underground. This has almost no pan depth. And I have my handy dandy ruler with me. So it looks like it's only about two and a half inches of bedding. That is pathetic for all species of small animals. You wanna have a minimum of at least three inches of bedding all throughout the enclosure. That way they can push and make dens themselves with the amount of bedding that they have in the enclosure. But five inches or more of bedding is more appropriate. What is the use of the pan then? This is not a bird enclosure, but for some reason this design mimics that of a 
a bird enclosure. So it's very weird because the preview makes the preview 528, which is the best and most suitable enclosure in the US market for say, for instance, Syrian hamsters. Gerbils, unfortunately not, because you still have that plastic pan. Dwarf hamsters can fit inside of the preview 528 and mice. Mice can definitely fit inside of a preview 528, but that pan depth is six inches. And for whatever reason, you can remove this pan, but the bedding is gonna be on top here. The bedding is not gonna be like right under here. This is the weirdest cage design marketed for hamsters that I've ever seen. This is the mist design, but let me just take it apart. The way to take it apart over here is going to be squeezing the sides and lifting up. Now, that is a very simplistic way of taking it off. I kind of like that when it comes to just trying to make this very quick to get inside, but this is probably gonna be if anybody has this cage or is using this cage as a travel carrier, which honestly, it has its own handle here. It does make a really good traveling cage, in my opinion, traveling only, not main cage. It could also be a cause for concern because that means it's very flimsy. I could tell you just from feeling it that these metal bars here are super flimsy. They are very flimsy. They are more flimsy than I have seen from say even the KT Critter Trails. There are some KT Critter Trails that uh, they are very iffy with the bars because they still can bend, but these ones, oh, they are so flimsy. And I just wouldn't feel comfortable letting my animal be in something like this, even if it is, for instance, a travel carrier, you really gotta be paying attention to making sure that nothing gets out of here. So next, the only way to take off the wheel that it comes with is by doing it that way that you see here. This wheel right here is a very plasticky wheel and it does have some holes right here, probably for ventilation as the hamster runs. Now the wheel size, it's very small, at least 6.5 inches is where you should be starting off for mice and even the smallest of dwarf hamsters, but they can get very big and might require something like an eight inch wheel. But for Syrians, they require a 10 to 12 inch wheel. So I can tell you right away and you could probably guess too, this is not gonna be appropriate because guess what? We are not gonna measure from the outside. We're gonna measure from the inside to the other inside. So this is about over five inches, just slightly over five inches, like five and I wanna say one fourth of an inch. Yeah, it's about five and one fourth of an inch right there. That is tiny. It's not going to meet any standards because mice, they have long tails. And hamsters, even the smallest ones, they grow to be very big. You don't want their backs to start curving on this because it becomes very uncomfortable. Just like if you wore shoes that kept rubbing up against your soles of your feet, you're going to start getting blisters. It's going to be uncomfortable. They're not going to want to be running on this. And because it is plastic and doesn't really have a good design, it might be making some noise as you hear there. I mean, if it looks flimsy and it looks like you can easily make this from a 3D printer, it's probably not gonna be good. It looks cheap. Would you want this in your home? Would you want your poor hamster or mouse using this? No. So this right here is a shoebox size design and it is a design for birds because birds, they use trays. It's easier to clean that way, but they're gonna be needing bedding. So having this right here, just have metal inside right where the pan is. They're gonna be walking on top of metal. It's just gonna be really awful and bad for them. Why would you use that? You could probably stick a hide in here and that's about it. All of the hamsters use either a litter pan, a digging box, or even a sand bath. And if you can't put stuff in here that they need, and if they need a bigger wheel in here, that wheel's gonna be too big to fit. So this is only gonna be good as a travel carrier, but there's much cheaper options because right now the only models left is the blue model and the purple one. The purple one is $64.99, the blue one is $44.99 with Prime, and there thankfully has only been three reviews of this enclosure. Thankfully nobody has really fallen for this enclosure because why would you go with this enclosure when you can go with the Preview 528 which is much better and easier to put together too. And actually has six inches of pan depth. So. Let me show you a very clever way of housing your hamster or mouse if you have one and are looking for alternative options. This right here, as you can see, is a bin cage. This is a 29 gallon bin cage. It's roughly around 450 to 500 square inches. And look at the difference in size quality. Let me just put this one off to the side. Look how much bigger of space you have. Let me push this back too so you can kind of 
get a sense of how much room is up here just from looking at the lid here. Now you see I created ventilation down below here. But let's just take a look inside. Sorry it's a bit messy because this is Bruno the mouse, but this is his enclosure here. He has tunnel systems inside of here. He's got his wheel, which of course he gets very messy so I have to daily clean that out. He's got his little hanging toy. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, besides the tunnel system. So many places to hide. He's got plenty of bedding and he is enjoying himself greatly in here just by himself because he is a male and he's not neutered so he doesn't have anybody else right now because I run and operate a rescue of my own for these guys and I like to advocate to at least have appropriate care. This bed will be great to use as an alternative if you are looking at cheaper options. With just the bin here, it's $16.99. But you do need power tools, and if you already have that, great. The mesh wire is in a roll that's about $6. And then the zip ties here that we use are just about $6 as well. So you're gonna be saving a lot just doing it yourself and providing them with a bigger space because that's what you should be more inclined to doing. You want to have an appropriate setup, right? Because you care about your animal and the longevity of your animal. Why would you get something Thing, say for instance like this for yourself maybe because it's pink it comes in fun colors I do admit it's nice to look at fun colors that appeal to us but you can also create a theme cage by doing it this way you can buy colorful bedding colorful items you could do themes pink themes blue themes cool themes space themes any theme you want you're in control of it so that is something to think about for you guys in the future if you're looking at getting something like this. So if you enjoyed today's review, hit like to show support, comment down below with anything you would like to say. And if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family and to check out other cage reviews on the channel here, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next review video that I film. Bye bye And please don't bye.